Thank you so much, Professor Maria Probelli. And uh, I, I also like to be, uh, uh, express my uh, gratitude to, uh, to uh, OSU and FOSFOG 2022 in Firenze. Before I go, as you can see right here, that I'm the very little man, and there is a very superman and superwoman right there as a co-chair who are serving uh, voluntarily for over the last uh, six years. So I'd like to Im invite them to come over here to actually, you know, uh, greeting to everyone. Uh, Professor Kijun Lee from Busan National University. Please come on the podium. All right, so I'm very happy to be here. So at a very prestigious uh, event of uh, open source software community. I'm uh, Ki-Jun Lee, working at Busan National University and uh, has been serving as one of the co-chair of UN OpenJS initiative. As Maria uh, told, so this uh, initiative was started six years ago and uh, our Activity is mainly based on open source geospatial software like uh, QGIS, GeoNode, PostGIS, GeoPaparazzi, and QField, OpenDrawMap, OpenStreetMap, etc., etc. So, without your tremendous contribution, we couldn't make uh, one single step. So, I really appreciate your effort and thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Professor Lee. I also like to be uh, uh, invite uh, Professor Maria Brobelli to the podium for her greetings. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Now, now I'm here as part of uh, this initiative. So I'm a professor at the Politecnico di Milano in Italy, but I'm also one of the person of OSGEO active within this initiative. And I want just to remember that uh, OSGEO contributed, as, has contributed in the last years, since the beginning of the initiative, at least oh, with the software, obviously, but also directly with the geo for all for providing courses to many, you will see in the presentation, to many uh, people of the staff of UN, specifically on QGIS and PostGIS, and also with the challenges that were sponsored by the board of director of uh, OSGEO. So uh, OSGEO is uh, really part of uh, this initiative, and uh, I think that uh, uh, I want also th to thank all the people that uh, were involved in uh, those years. Okay, and now back to you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was, uh, as, as far as I remember, that it was like 2015 that we actually had uh, uh, in our partnership with OSGO that who actually uh, you know, inspired us to building this UN Open GIS in 2006. So I, I must actually express that uh, our you know, gratitude to OSGO as well as that uh, GEO for all and also open GDS from the uh, Republic of Korea. And uh, thank you so much for that. United Nations was created by the, the member state. And uh, this is a preamble of the United Nations. With the people of the United Nations uh, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind. So they de decided to have, to have a mandate to maintain international peace and security, to promote economic and social development, and also to promote and protect human rights. Peace and security is not that actually, uh, you know, simple kind of issue that over the whole decade we have made a lot of uh, challenges, but also we are continuously solving the, uh, many of the problem by the United, uh, the member state, to, to actually tackle on this one. Another important aspect is the sustainable development. 
as, as, as mandated by the whole member state of the United Nations, uh, social and economic development is a key foundation uh, for the people's, uh, you know, uh, enhancing people's life uh, uh, qualities and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. To support this one, UN geospatial means the profi geospatial professional who's serving as an uh, international civil servant in the United Nations, in headquarters in New York, but also here in the, uh, Italy we have a, a United Nations Global uh, Service Center in Brindisi, as well as that uh, many countries, they actually used to have the UN field operation. They are the one as a United Nations uh, geospatial who actually be agreed to have a vision to support peace and security pillar, human rights, sustainable development, uh, humanitarian aid, international law, by universal use of the geospatial information to underpin and support a mandate and operation of the United Nations for a better world. Also, they determined to build up the strategy to how they like to be achieve the goal. Particularly, first goal is, uh, you know, building the fundamental data methodology tool and service. They can actually be uh, fulfilled to support the uh, uh, primary mandate of, of the United Nations. And secondly, they like to be adding value by analytics, innovative ideas, and tools. And, and data and, and so on and so forth, so that they can actually be uh, enhancing more uh, in, in informed decision making and the better you know, uh, uh, operation and so on and so forth. Another important aspect of the third goal is to actually working together with the uh, UN, as the UN is not a small organization, it's very big as in, even uh, in the UN Secretariat, but also with the whole UN family. Uh, UN uh, you know, agencies and funds and programs. So how we can actually deliver as a one is a key uh, goal for, for the uh, United Nations Geospatial. And fourth, it's not only within the UN system, but also uh, we like to actually work with you, with the nation, with the uh, contributing partner, with the NGO, with the academia, with the volunteer community, to deliver as one, as to, to tackle the, or to solve the, uh, many of the challenges that we are facing with. So the UN Geospatial actually are delivering and ask to delivering and providing support and services, a full spectrum of the geospatial aspect, from the basic uh, to the, a lot of different kind of analysis, and also uh, you know, kind of the projection uh, image uh, intelligence aspect and change detection, monitoring, and, and so on and so forth. What day day to day life of the peacekeepers aspect and, and so on and so forth. These are the kind of the broad sense of the spectrum that the, what UN Geospatial is asked to deliver. So this is kind of one slide that we, you can actually easily see in the time of the crisis, whether it is a natural disaster climate changes or man-made disaster, the accurate geospatial information is a key. And also, a suitable GIS tools are also very much needed for supporting those uh, respond on the ground and the local community and global citizen. That's, that's why the UN uh, Open GIS was created by the member state, contributing partner, by the you know, international organization, academia, and as well as that uh, NGO, and also private sector. So all everybody come together toward how we can promote, advocate, and mainstream the hybrid geospatial technology for enhancing UN operational capability and for supporting developing countries' geospatial capacity building. This is what the, our vision of the uh, UN Open uh, GIS initiative. Another important aspect, because of there are so many challenges 
then what we have a solution. There are so many uh, you know, uh, requirements compared with what we have are tools. So current tool, whether that is open source or proprietary, are not sufficient to support. So why not? We can actually be harmonized as many as possible to solve the problem. So that is what we brought up as an idea uh, with the leadership of the co-chair and many of the contributing partner to actually adopt that hybrid GIS platform is the way that we can move forward. So let's coexist two different kinds of software stack and not competing but also complementing uh, each other to maximum access the most suitable uh, GIS tool for the demand at very uh, you know, time on demand to fulfill their operational uh, requirement in very much flexible and cost-effective manner. And also, uh, uh, UN OpenGIS has been uh, setting up as a, a government stru uh, governance structure for uh, six, actually the seven, but one is going to be not necessarily retiring as merging to the uh, others. So from the, uh, uh, the green top left side, the working group one is hybrid GIS platform to harmonize all various different ones to be ready to use by any, of the, uh, any moment of the demand. And working group two is a capacity building that you know, actually uh, train, educate, knowledge sharing, and so on and so forth. And then uh, uh, working group three uh, was just uh, analy analysis, but which is actually facing out to merging with the uh, you know, geo AI of the uh, working group uh, five. So working group four, you know, data collection, and working group five, as mentioned, that uh, uh, geospatial artificial in in intelligence and machine learning, as well as that the geo analytics. And working group six is open drum map that will, I will uh, explain further and uh, uh, 3D uh, perspective. Working group seven is a UN vector tile toolkit that how we can actually be deliver the information within the very thin uh, communication network and so on. So I like to actually go through briefly about that, uh, some of the uh, activities and projects that you can see that the, what kind of spectrum that we are working on it. The first one, uh, working group one, is actually focusing on hybrid GIS architecture. As mentioned, that is to uh, consider the best uh, support to the UN demand, and which will integrating the geo uh, database and complement the system to serve all of the demand, all of the need, and which we consider is very much cost effective and flexible. But also scalability is another key aspect, and innovative, and easy to transfer the knowledge and uh, technology to the uh, you know developing country as well. Working group two make a very successful, and who actually build a lot of the uh, capacity in UN, where UN doesn't actually have much use of the uh, open source geospatial over the last uh, you know six years ago. I mean that. The, so now, we, many of the, our uh, UN Geospatial colleagues that who actually know and very friends with you and all of the uh, uh, aspect, not only uh, in a solution, but also being as a network, as a friends and colleagues. And this, this is a biggest achievement uh, by the working group to capacity building. Working group three made a, a very a huge job to bring that a lot of analytics solution into the uh, United Nations through different kind of the platform. Initially, it was a unique kind of the uh, platform. Now, because many of are using the QGIS as a uh, you know kind of uh, usual desktop solution, so it has a, a plug-in. Many of the uh, analytics solution develop into the uh, uh, QGIS plugin and so on and so forth. And Working Group 5 is focusing Geo AI, as mentioned there, is, and also are going to be merging with the uh, uh, Geo Analytics. They actually have done 
lot of uh, you know the motivation and and uh, uh, the building to how we can actually move toward the next uh, generation and how we can actually use the technology in more innovative way uh, to do so. And there is, as you can see, that the QR code. There is a ongoing challenges in hackathon and read by uh, Professor Maria Bruelli and our colleague of the Thomas and Jongshin, uh, Mr. Jongshin Chen. I think it's uh, somewhere here. I guess. Yes. And another important one, we are not only just focusing to, you know, something to develop by ourselves to make a kind of a silo or duplication, but we identify very useful kind of technology that already been developed and building the community by the open drone map. So we build up the partnership with open drone map to that, that we, we believe and we already have done that some of the pilot to, to understand about that, uh, how we can best use of them into the UN operation. So we have done a number of the exercise and many of the UN operation uh, in the field are, are demanding to uh, employ uh, such kind of the, uh, proven uh, technology as well. And UN vector tire is a very uh, interesting topic that as you might be aware that in many of the uh, location in the UN field mission means our, you know, uh, friends of the, con I mean the country, neighboring country, they, they are very much suffering of the not to having power. Uh, no power that means no internet, no Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. So very, uh, they have to rely on very thin kind of communication network. So, so the vector tile is a tackle the how we can actually be condensing and compacting the data that can be uh, effectively cost-efficient way to deliver to the end users and so on and so forth. So these, these are the very good, but also uh, for those uh, time of the, of the crisis, like, you know, disaster. At the time, the power failure is there and no commun communication net network. So we try to find a way, very handy, uh, mobile uh, GIS solution, they can actually be enhancing, improving the communication among the people that who are already in the, uh, uh, trapped by the uh, natural disaster and so on and so forth. Very interesting story of the indoor GIS is actually a pioneering by the, our uh, uh, dear co-chair, uh, Professor Gijun Lee, is to find a way to help out those visually impaired person to be navigated or to be actually easily access this uh, auditorium uh, without uh, seeing. So uh, it's, it's a very uh, important to be actually uh, build this kind of capacity and have done that the number of the proof of concept in the United Nations headquarters in New York and then see that how we can actually be expand them to the other UN facility first. Another one, as mentioned, that is a smash and geopaparazzi and cube field and Kobo toolbox. Over the last few years that we have done that the pilot project to, to see whether that is really useful for the field uh, operational condition. So we, we determined that all of them has uh, some of the different kind of pros and cons, but uh, they are all fulfilled to be used by the UN and colleague on the field and many of the uh, field operational demand. So one of them is a smash that we like to be actually be uh, from the pilot project and real uh, in the implementation in the uh, in UN mission in Congo. Uh, so that uh, uh, currently is moving together with our developer, our you know uh, technical supporter from the Brindigi, as well as that the field mission. The, our colleague Epa and Rodwell is working uh, together with uh, uh, Sylvia. Another uh, successful story is on my story map. Though there are many different kind of solution, we really like to be uh, build up the ca huge case by the open source to deliver a uh, story map uh, kind of the uh, platform for the uh, UN field mission in order to increasing, enhancing uh, better communication between among the people of the, of the nation 
and, and so on and so forth, particularly for the uh, people as, as a uh, uh, you know, beneficiary with the uh, donor, sometimes they don't know uh, what was happening, how it works, and, and, and so on and so forth. This is a very good kind of uh, agenda and topic that we can put on the story uh, project. So I thanks to the, our colleague from the UN mission in South Sudan. And Akba is here, I guess. I don't know. I, I cannot see uh, because it's very shiny light here. Though, but I thank you so much to the uh, Akba, but also thanks to the, our uh, colleague and partner, GeoSolution, that who actually have done excellent job uh, over the past, uh, you know, months and, and so on and so forth. Another uh, success sto story is that uh, during the time of the challenge in monsoon, particularly for the flooding and also um, uh, kind of the uh, challenge of the risk to the people, we often are facing the cloud-free, uh, cloud kind of covering on the, over the satellite imagery, which actually be uh, very much limiting us to make maximum use of the uh, uh, satellite or optical uh, imagery from the sky. Uh, space. So that's why I thanks to the government of the Finland who actually offer and contribute uh, to, to the, uh, you know, this project uh, through the, our colleague of the GISPO. I think so Pekka is around here. Pekka, can you raise your hand? Oh, okay. Hey, Pekka, yeah, I can see you. So Pekka and his team actually, uh, together with our colleague from UN uh, mission in uh, RVA, uh, is that your mission, ABA? Yeah. So uh, they are working very closely together with the PECAS team, uh, GISPO, to come up with the uh, you know, methodology of the crowd free satellite imagery. They can actually be very much handful to support the, the you know, on uh, available kind of the uh, uh, satellite imagery. Now I like to actually uh, draw your attention that, as you mentioned, that we are very much uh, committed to maximum fully utilize of the uh, open source kind of solution, not only software, but also data and other knowledges and so on and so forth. So I, I consider that this uh, community as a UN Open GIS initiative is a kind of conduit, conduit to addressing all of the, our need all of the, our uh, you know, uh, solution that you already been provided to the UN communi community in large, but also not only that, but also uh, partner uh, community for the UN operation of the UN operation. But also important is that uh, we are also able to be introduced through various different kind of uh, joint project or UN project to to the uh, UN. Uh, I mean that uh, uh, you know to the developing country. In this way, that we may be able to play the, some role to promoting your excellent work and experience that can be available by the people that who are not yet to be uh, know about you. So I, I hope that this might be the uh, kind of the uh, good role that we may be able to play uh, for all of us. And uh, we actually gathered in 2019 in uh, Bucharest, and due to the, this uh, unexpected un, uh, kind of pandemic, now in 2022, we actually uh, get again to make step forward. I thank you so much. Thank you.